It's a beautiful day here in South Florida, and today we're going to be getting ready to install a five switch rocker panel on the column and a light switch pod for my wife's Jeep. I installed it on this Jeep a few months ago, and I've liked the product so much that I'm going to be installing it in my wife's Jeep, which is this one right here. Brief look at some of the things we'll be using or that you will need. Uh, first of all, here is the uh, waterproof switch relay uh, S-Pod that will be your control module uh, a guy on eBay sells it a really great price I think it's 130 140 it's worth every penny it's labeled it's colored uh, I will be posting a link about it online so that you can go ahead and buy it directly from him uh, it includes everything you need basically including the relay tour the positive cable next thing you will need uh, and I'll also be including a link where you can get one of these or you can pick up uh, any basically any rocker switch column uh, pillar or if you want to do the one that goes on the windshield frame top section you can get one of those too however this install I'll be doing will be for the column one now notice this one as well as most of the ones that are out there only bring four spots for the uh, uh, rocker switches I will be showing you how to install a fifth one here uh, and the nice thing about this particular one is that it brings five rocker switches you don't have to go out and buy one it already brings it the reason why I like the five rocker switch option here uh, I'm gonna be adding a fifth one is because this really waterproof relay uh, has the capability for five switches so in here we only have Four, so I'll be adding a five so that I can max out the capability here of the Bosman waterproof switch. You'll need some uh, black uh, gauge 16 cable, some red gauge 16 cable. I have double, some leftover from my previous install on my Jeep, and I got a new one uh, to make sure I have enough cable. You probably only need one at the end. Uh, I have some. Uh, uh, waterproof, you don't have to get them waterproof, but the regulars work as well. This is basically to uh, uh, connect the cables. These are some terminals, you'll need some of those so you can connect your grounding. And these, you'll need about two boxes. I got here two boxes. Why? Because you'll be needing 15 of these at least, so that you can connect them to the end of your rocker switch terminals. You got three on each, and then you got five, so it's three times five is 15 might want to consider and it's highly recommended some flex tubing I got this is Home Depot you can get it at AutoZone or any other auto parts stores uh, basically it's to protect your wire that you're gonna run on the engine bay you don't need, really need to protect the wire it goes inside the car in my opinion uh, I got some black duct tape I got some electric tape in black measuring tape a drill two drill bits um, some self uh, tapping or screws with drill bits in the end uh, very important here you need two screws I'm attaching with some butterfly nuts uh, sharpie some other tools if you have a crimping tool it'll be kind of like makeshift crimping tool if you will uh, you'll be needing um, one of these or you can get actually there is you can see it better uh, this way um, see if you can get some focus there this is a aluminum bar and it's really long. I used it originally for my first install on that Jeep there. Um, and I have a leftover piece that's about this long. In reality, what you need is uh, two seven inch pieces that you'll be using, at least in my setup, to support the, the, water, uh, the waterproof uh, relay S-Pot. And then you'll be needing one more to support the, um, the fuse that goes to the positive cable ready for the install first you'll need to remove uh, this pillar part portion here and the way you get to that is you have to kind of loosen this part and the visor uh, I'll show you in a second these two screws here and for that you need a 13 a half inch uh, socket and this one over here this horn if you can see it's a light and then you also be removing here the visor to take this piece off and that you need a torque wrench T20, I believe. So this section will be coming off, the vice will be coming off in order to get to the column. 
see it there in the camera through the light reflection uh, but basically that's a half inch socket and uh, T20 um, torque wrench it's unscrewing the visor taking it off all the screws there's a little um, clip here that gets comes here so you gotta be careful with that pull it nice and and with care and then the last thing here you got the cable here connecting to your mic so you want to make you loosen this up before you take it off and then voila it comes off completely let's put it aside for now your column is similar it's got the same uh, white little support so you kind of gotta like uh, nicely you to pull it off and it comes off and uh, don't throw these away you're gonna be needing this little clips in a few I take off this panel here and you can simply use a uh, uh, flat head screwdriver and nicely or gently kind of take it off or you can kind of pull this parts off little by little and it'll kind of nicely come off and there it is the S pot you can see the see the craftsmanship the detail that goes into making it it's uh, it's great quality uh, everything is colored and it's labeled of course red being your positive wire and it's labeled just in case positive your black is being your negative this section goes to a battery uh, terminal in the car this other cable you will see three this other cable basically is the one and it's labeled goes to switches that would be the, the column pillar switch uh, rocker panel uh, we're feeding the cables I mentioned earlier I don't know if you can see here because the lighting but there is a, a hole in here that has like a rubber little piece we're gonna fit them through there it's above the master cylinder which is this part here and what we're gonna be doing also is placing our at our pot right here which is the same setup I got on the other side and with our two aluminum brackets we're gonna kind of slightly bend them and I'll show you how we're gonna screw them in this uh, screw supports if you can see here and kind of suspend it out uh, the same thing here with this one it's gonna suspend it out and uh, I'll be showing you pictures of the after install so you can see what it looks or what to spec, at least in my setup. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. There's multiple ways to skin the cat. No, no uh, harm intended here for the cat, just the same. Uh, multiple ways to peel the onion. Uh, this one seems to be working for me in my other car, so I like that setup. Uh, it's closer here to the engine bay, so it's the higher away from any water, even though it's waterproof. And it's closer here to the pillar switch. Uh, one little detail is we can custom order this pots. One little detail here is typically uh, the pot, the way it's sold uh, or made, is with 36 inch launch cables. Uh, because of my other setup, um, I wanted uh, to have an easier time reaching, going down through here and reaching up through my column. I asked that they be made with uh, 12 extra inches, which is 48. I chose the cables going to the switch. Uh, that'll cost you just a little extra dollars, but I think it's well worth it. Uh, you can ask the uh, eBay, the manufacturer guy, uh, for that to be customized for you. Okay, so once this little part comes off, what you want to do is you want to try to make a little hole here so you can feed the cables once you kind of tie them together, the ones for the switches and the non-relay uh, cables as well. But once you have a little hole and tension there, uh, go ahead and feed the wire through. Make sure you put a, some cable in front to keep all the wires together. Through here, and then pass it down through this part here. But before you do that, you want to try to see if you can uh, run uh, a cable or a wire from the other side so you can pull these wires down. Uh, what I'm going to be using is some uh, zip ties and tie them together to so make sure I can reach in. What you want to do, the cable is going to be showing down here. You want to feed the zip tie through these holes here and then slowly pull and bring the cable up all the way up to here and make sure it's nice and snug and snuggy and, uh, and uh, straight in there when you finish doing that. And you separate the tip on the front. Uh, make sure you don't confuse these. The uh, ones for the switches or the the ones with the clear, red, green, yellow, blue, and white. The other ones that are the permanent on cables for things like your uh, CB radio and stuff 
are the ones that are like pink, orange, uh, not necessarily traditional colors. So that's how you can tell them apart. The next thing we're going to do is uh, do the cutout. I already did two here and I pre-cut some of the other ones on the uh, new pillar. Notice this pillar only comes with four and the reason that I'm doing a fifth cutout over here is because the S-Pot has five capability for five rocker switches so I feel personally that if you're not using all five then you're not maximizing your product. In either case, um, what you want to keep doing is on the pre-sections uh, here you want to uh, use your uh, blade here and kind of slightly and patiently go around the, all the edges and once you take them off uh, you're gonna have to maybe a little bit carve a little bit until you get a nice nuggy fit with each one of them you gotta test them out and as they fit you or they don't fit you're gonna carve out a little more from the edges and go on so on and so forth once you have all these set up and aligned if you take any of the cutouts you got and uh, you remove the excess um, rubber from it and you leave it right up to the edge here. I already done one for you here and it's already nice and simple. And the reason why we do that is because we're going to mark this hole that hasn't been marked and you don't want to be marking outside that excess because then you're going to cut it out too wide. You want to make sure it's on the inner side so you cut it nice and nug and the same thing. You kind of eat yourself way out as you try to make a nice tight fit. The placement for this so it's nice and perfect. It's uh, once you have their section clean, basically it's the same height from the edge to the bottom. You mark with sharpie here, and then a sharpie over here, and then you place it in here, okay? And then you're gonna mark with a sharpie all around it, all right? And you're gonna proceed to cut out. Once you have it cut out and you remove the section here, notice where it's gonna end up. What you want to do is again eat out a little bit of the corners until you have a nice fit with your rocker panel. So the last step you want to do here is right on the prong that's on the side of the little clear plastic is going to light up later. It's you want to kind of bend it in a little bit, just a little without breaking it. Notice I already kind of pre-bended it and the reason being it is going to line up with this area here and it's going to make it easier for you to put in your, uh, your, wire, your wire connector. Uh, nice and in. Uh, I don't know if you could observe that here. If it would have been straight, it would have been rubbing here and make it hard in here. It'll be enough space for you to put in your wire connector. You'll see that in a few, in a few next few steps. Thank you. So, rocker panel. It's nice and nuggy fit. Thank you. Next step is you want to pull out your factory uh, pillar cover and the one that came out with the rocker panels and you want to flip them around. And you'll notice that your factory, which is the one on the bottom, has a little metal clip. We're gonna take that one out and transfer here to the top. However, your factory one does not bring one for the bottom. Your rocker panel one does. We're gonna borrow that from the back of the car. There is in the back of the car in your tailgate, there's this plastic back cover. You wanna um, slightly pry it from the bottom with a screwdriver, I already kind of pre-pried it out. And then you're gonna just wanna swivel it up. Notice it has the little edges there. And basically, you'll see that it has a bunch of clips. You don't want to take the ones from the corner, you want to take anything from the center. Thank you. You're going to take your 16 gauge cable, red black, and we're going to cut out um, three pieces that are about uh, three and a half to four inches long of the red and of the black, and you're going to cut another piece that's about four to five inches long. And these are going to be connected uh, to these connectors that are going to go in the back of the rocker switches. After you cut those little pieces, is to um, uh, clear the rubber coating so you expose the wire uh, about a little over uh, a little less than half an inch. And you can use a crimping tool if you have one, or you can use this uh, type of uh, blade. Uh, just kind of go out like that, and you have it. Once you have it over the range, kind of kind of twist them a little bit so they're nice and tight. So you're gonna insert them into the uh, There we go. So I think we're done with these. I've taken one and kind of pre-connected uh, into the little connector. This is going to be connected to the back of each of the rocker switches. Again, you will take this little piece here, 
already cut this one. This one's a little too long. It's kind of made it just long enough so it barely sticks in there. Uh, and then once you stick it in, again, you either use a crimping tool, I have a, uh, a pressure uh, a, a wrench, whatever you call this, and I'm going to uh, kind of secure it in there by pressing it real tight. <sighs> Hopefully that does it. Um, it is tight. I mean, that's not going to receive that much movement in there. So what you want to do now is take one of these with the red ones and kind of pair it together and insert it in here and you'll see how it's going to look in a few seconds. Alright, <clears throat> so last step we were doing is we were cutting out the little piece of wire uh, and we were getting ready to connect them to the little quick, the little disconnects that go behind the uh, rocker switches. As you can see, I have five in total. Notice that the longer cable that was four to five inches long was at the end. That is basically to make up for the difference between this last rocker switch to this other rocker switch here at the end. And then you have five, one, two, three, four, five. So once you crimp them and you connect them together, two cables on each, you do the same thing for your black. Uh, remember on the red one, you want to leave about, uh, I don't know, six feet, five feet long on the black. It's not as critical that you leave that many, that much, because you're going to connect it right next to the dash. So the next step is to connect it to the back of your rocket switches. So the red one is basically your power. That's going to be in the middle ones. So all you do is kind of slide them in there, which is nicely connected. And um, once you get that done, uh, you'll proceed to do the black wire, which is going to be your ground. It's going to be on the outer edge over here on the behind the actual light of the switches. And then your cable that comes from the engine compartment that goes to the switches is going to go here in this last edge here towards the back side of the rocker switch, okay? Right. So this is once you connect all your cables, this is pretty much how it's gonna look. Uh, this is, does not have the row of cables, which is for the uh, switches that activate the S-Pod, the relay switches in the engine compartment. But pretty much this is what you have so far. Uh, I'm ready to go to the car and install the other disconnects on the cables coming from the engine compartment that are for the switches, all right? Um, now I'm outside, the wires, the ground, and the power for the LED uh, rocket switches is on, it's connected. I just took the time, I didn't film it, because uh, it's basically the same process connecting the other ones. Connecting the cables that come from the engine compartment out of the S-Pod, the Bosman S-Pod, the waterproof. Uh, notice, again, how you distinguish them from the constant life ones. The constant life ones have different variations of colors, orange, uh, pink, and so on and so forth. The ones that are for the rocket switches are basically almost primary colors. You got the bright yellow, green, white, red, and blue. Now basically, it's nice because it's really color coded. The green will go connected in the top, which is the green. The white one here in the bottom, the yellow with this one, the with the uh, yellow orange light, the red with the red, and the blue with the blue. And the nice thing is that in the engine compartment, you'll have the same color wires that are the ones you're going to be connecting to your devices, your LED lights, whatever it is you're going to be powering. Uh, and that way, it's easy. There's no guessing. There's no trying to troubleshoot. You know, you know that if you're connecting it to your white switch, it's going to be the bottom one that I connected here. And you're just going to be your white cable in the front to power whatever it is you want. So that's the nifty thing about the S-Pot uh, besides a great prize. It's the ease of installation adding devices going forward. Take the two aluminum uh, metals uh, bars that I took, flat bars, uh, and they're each 7 inch. Remember this is to support the actual uh, relay switch box. And you're going to do two holes about, you know, Half an inch, maybe off from the one of the edges on each side, and then we're gonna start bending them. And I'm gonna show you how. Next, we're gonna secure the pot, the relay switch box, uh, and we're gonna take the master cylinder here, the screws that are supporting it. We're gonna loosen up one at a time, and uh, we're gonna attach the metal bars here that we uh, cut out and made the drill holes for.
step you're gonna take it's uh you're gonna kind of bend it kind of in a curved fashion and what you want to do is kind of uh, bend it in kind of one inch increment uh, this is about one inch one inch one inch so a total of three inches until you go from a, a vertical position here to a vertical position here uh, don't worry if it's not completely too straight now we're gonna adjust it as we put in the uh, pot okay here we are taking our pretty much bent piece uh, into it here and we have the hole there so we're gonna uh, feed it through the uh, the hole that's there and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna uh, attach the uh, nut that it was there originally and secure that tightly and align it we're gonna make sure that when we tie it up we align it so that this is vertical here about this position here and then this is gonna rest on top and I'll show you how. I have these two brackets screwed in. This one's a little loose, this one's tight, and it's a little angle. Notice that it's not straight. It's not here, it's not down here, it's at a little angle. And what I've done is, these brackets usually are straight. I've opened it up a little bit on both sides so that when I put them in here, it kind of coincides as much as I can with the angles. I don't know if you can see that, but it's flat here and it's flat here and it's at this level over here, it's flush. So all I gotta do now is kind of make it put a little bit out here and mark where my hole, I gotta do a little hole here so I can tighten it up. Um, a little hard to do here. I'll get it in there. And then this one maybe a little bit lower there. Um, that will be good. that's a good mark uh, now you can go ahead and remove the pot the other thing that I've done it um, instead of running my positive and my negative all the way over there you don't have to connect this is the terminal cables to the battery you don't have to connect the ne negative to the negative I mean basically the whole body of the car is a negative so I plan to run a shorter instance of it and connect it somewhere around here and that way I don't have to run that cable and the only one I'm going to be running across the top is going to be the positive but you'll see that in a minute I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn off the camera and do the drills right on here. I otherwise would have done it off side uh, off the car, but um, I wasn't sure how far in I was gonna have to do the drill, so I figured it's better for me to present it in there. If you feel uncomfortable drilling in here in the car, then I recommend unscrewing the brackets and doing the drills, the holes in there, uh, in both sides. So, I went ahead and I removed these brackets. I drilled the holes where I marked them on both sides, and now I'm getting ready to. Uh, uh, uses butterfly uh, nuts and the screws uh, to secure the S pod. Right. Remember the set of cables for your permanent accessories. Right now, I don't have any additional accessories, only other than the LED lights that I'm going to be connecting. I do have a CB radio. I'm going to be mounting, but that'll be a project for another day. So I'll be connecting the CB radio, the power to one of these cables here because uh, these are the permanent on that way I can turn it on without having the keys on what have you but in the meantime since I'm not using them what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, bundle, the, bundle them up together and kind of the tip just in case the wires are exposed because uh, those those will be live wires I'm just kind of wrap those up like that just to avoid just in case there's any contact wrap it up in here like that little bundle and I'm gonna leave it nicely and securely just kind of tucked away in here for future use to take your red wire which is gonna be your positive and you're gonna see where we're gonna be connecting that we're gonna be connecting that to a cigarette lighter in a few steps uh, uh, further ahead but for the meantime I'm ready to now start connecting my accessory switch wires which again they're color coded that's the nice thing about this uh, S-Pot everything is color coded so it's gonna match so simply my green goes to the green again it's the outer one if you put it like this is it goes on the one facing the outside of the driver's side um, the red one goes in the middle and your negative which is your black one goes facing inside the vehicle uh, provided you have your switches installed with the LED windows facing inward uh, so let me go ahead and install those and we'll return as soon as we finish installing these. 
finished version. Just want to show you very simply, green wire, green, blue with blue, red with the red rocker, yellow with the yellow rocker, and white with the white rocker. So all I have, the only cables that I have now is my black one. It's going to be negative, it's going to be connected here in a little while. Uh, first going to crimp in one of those uh, round terminal end connectors. And then I have already my red wire that I fed through here. And I'm going to feed all the way through the back and we're going to open the center console where the AC uh, knobs are so that we can reach the cigarette lighter and plug this in. Uh, one last note, notice uh, I already put the little clamps, the one we uh, borrowed from the tailgate, the one we took away from the previous uh, pillar uh, guard. And um, now the last point I wanted to make is uh, on my other original install on my white Jeep, uh, this cable, because I got the 36 inch version, it would only reach up to here, so I had to kind of patch it up up to here. In here, you notice one seamless connection. The reason being is because I requested for a custom fit, and I requested that this accessory uh, wires to the switches be 48 inches instead of 36. In other words, 12 inches more. So now I have, you know, a nice snug uh, uh, room in there to connect them and not have to do any patching or connecting. So it's your choice. Get the 36. You might have to uh, patch one there for the top w w uh, switch, rocker switch, or just get the 48 inch. Your choice. It might cost a little extra money. It's totally worth it. All right, here's where one of these uh, terminal end connectors come in handy. This is going to be the negative uh, for the rocker switches. It's going to be connected right here. I'm going to crimp this one on. It's to put the fuse, the inline fuse that comes from the red wire over there, over here. You're going to cut around here. All right, and then we're going to put, we're going to remove this. We're going to cut a little piece in here, put this here, put this in here like this, and then the piece that we cut will go from here to here, okay? Third piece, we cut it a little shorter, uh, and we bend it at not quite a 90 degree, but almost, and then we took this piece, we marked it more or less where we want this to be, like this, and uh, we used the uh, knife to cut in here. A section of it so that this can be inserted and this can go in there like that and through and then we can put some screws in here two screws so it'll hold it in place screw this in and this is where the self tapping screws that have like a drill bit at the end come into place and they're gonna go right in here in this section right here we're gonna connect the red power uh, wire that powers the LEDs uh, within the uh, rocker panels and remember I fed the wire through here pulled it out from down here and now I'm going to feed it in through the back I'm going to loosen up this pan front panel section here and notice this is basically a separate section right here is the seam and it comes out all the way from the bottom you need to be careful when you first pry it out because it has got some wires going into the back that you got to release um, at least from this unit here before you completely remove it and make it easier to work with um, again this process is easier if you put your keys in and if you have a matic put the leveler all the way back and then slowly pry in between the the panels and pry it out a little easy and then this one comes down out it comes it comes out and then down from here like you see right now and then there is uh, two wires that are connected here you're gonna have to disconnect in order to remove the thing the whole panel to come out the front part disarmed here is the uh, plug that goes into this left uh, connector here and then the other one that goes into this middle din and then the last one which is the one we're going to be working with is the one that goes into the cigarette lighter uh, we're going to tap into the uh, positive which is always on when you turn your ignition key on uh, of the uh, cigarette lighter connector here in the back uh, there's two ways to do it um, right now I don't want to make any permanent connections so uh, I'm just going to stick it in there and uh, tape it to keep it in place but the, the better way to do it if that's where you want to permanently connect it is to actually uh, remove this little uh, taping peel off a little bit the, the, the wire cable that's on this side and uh, solder it in there uh, and then tape it back out
that's the actual preferred way if you ask me but uh, I'm just going to do a temporary uh, connection here and I'm going to make it more permanent later so for now I'll just be sticking in there I'll be showing you how uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish riding the cable through the back and until I see you here in the front and I'm going to use again probably the famous zip ties to kind of insert it here and kind of fish out the cable from the back so I was able to fish the cable all the way through the back uh, carefully keep making sure it stays straight so it's not floating on the floor and whenever you move out the rugs uh, you're not tripping all over it so now I came out here and then here is the tip of my uh, uh, zip tie that I'm using it to fish with so I'm gonna tie it in and pull it up through here just fed my red cable here and this is a cigarette lighter plug and the live wire is the one that's blue and it's got that little maybe like a pinkish stripe in it but it's mostly blue blue with a pink stripe so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel mine and uh, insert it in there and then wire it around I uh, peeled my wire it's peeled and uh, take it all out so you can see it and then I inserted it in there along with the blue pink stripe cable and then I'll be taping it around to do is plug back in all the connectors and put back the panel panels back in um, one uh, thing if I had to do it again with an automatic uh, mine's a stick and I didn't have to do this but it uh, it helps to put it back in if you move the uh, 4x4 leveler all the way back along with the shifter so that part's done like the fuse this fuse um, so I kind of cut the cable to fit just around there where the fuse is gonna go uh, and I have this much left which is to the end piece for the fuse the other step it's uh, to install the sleeve although this comes with a protective sleeve like you see here uh, since this is gonna be crossing over the engine itself here I like to cover it with an actual you know kind of like would come stock from factory and it's for the cable cable that comes out of here the other thing that we just did too as well is we took the uh, negative terminal cable that otherwise would have been connected to the negative power battery we fed it through the back and here and we connected it into this little screw that already has some other uh, negative connections there so it's near the box we don't have to run the cable over there so I think I prefer it that way so after you cut this longer cable almost towards the end then you want to almost um, have a little piece attached the little end terminal and this will be in between both this is the finished product I'm just gonna place a couple zip ties here and tie it into this back uh, wire harness um, as you can see there the only step left here it's this is the uh, fuse box the uh, very nice well put together here's the brackets that you see uh, that I installed custom made very simple to do aluminum you bend it and then you kind of arch open the bracket that it comes otherwise it will be straight and it's pretty firm you can see there it's not going to move I'm moving it with a lot of force so and it's leveled um, all the wires negative I connected it here instead of running it all the way over there and the only thing left is this is my accessories so this is the cable here in the engine bay and I'll be covering these tips in the end because these will be you know in case you turn them on it'll be charged I don't want that making any rubbing on any contact so I'll just cover them with tape I'm gonna do everything except one which is the one I'm gonna install today and it's gonna be for this um, wires I have here already pre-installed this LED bar and that's all I have to install for now but as you add uh, you can just connect them to the different color wires here again that are connected to the uh, match to the rockers that are color matched as well. I hope you enjoyed this uh, install project and uh, probably learned from it. And I'd say do it. Um, it's probably between a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say maybe a 5 or a 6 instead of a skill level. For the price, you can't beat the price for the quality, the workmanship of the actual fuse box. It's great. I've been using it in my white Jeep again for about um, almost a year now. So, no problems. Guys and gals, I'm basically trying to do the same set setup I did in my white Jeep. Uh, now for my wife's Jeep. So what I'm gonna do here, it's 
go ahead and install one accessory just to show you how easy it is to add on accessories or LED lights or whatever. Um, I already had this one pre-installed. It was not live, of course. Just waiting to do this install. So <clears throat> here are the wires already zip locked, tighted. Thought about running inside. I mean, there's no right or wrong way. Whatever is your preference. So I ran a cable already here. I cut it just enough so it could reach around this area. I ran it with a sleeve around there, and now I'm at the point in which uh, the beauty of the uh, S pot here, the relay switch, comes in. Notice all these are color coded. So I'm trying to decide uh, what the setup I did in mind was. I think these are my halos up here. Uh, these are the, I don't know if you can see it there, but okay, there. The blue one is my uh, windshield LED. I believe this one, the red one, it's going to be my front uh, bull bar LED. These are my pillar LEDs that I have here. And these will be my reverse backup LEDs. So I'm going to have to look for a color red so I can hook it up in here so it'll be my middle. That way it'll be top, middle, and then kind of sides. Um, and then back, kind of top-down approach, I guess. So we'll be looking for the red. This is how easy it is. Oh, guess what? Here's the red. So I'll be connecting this cable here to the red and the negative to the car chassis, and voila, it should work. Okay, guys and girls, um, fellow Jeepers. All right, I'm getting ready to hook up the uh, front LED bar, and uh, I just kind of peeled off maybe, I don't know, that's less than half an inch. I'll go with the measurements. Um, on both sides, this is for the accessory wires that comes in from the s pot. This is the wire that comes in, it's gonna be connected to my LED bar. And uh, just wanted to let you know if you didn't see the picture originally, I'm using 16 wire to connect all my LEDs or extension cables, and then these are a 16 or 14 gauge, uh, whatever these are called, um, connectors, wire connectors. Just go ahead and uh, peel it off. Take one of these and insert it and then go ahead and crimp it. Um, so now I already connected my red terminal. Now I'm going to connect, uh, or cable rather. I'm going to connect now my black. I'm going to cut it a little, maybe a little shorter. Connect it with this uh, terminal end. And it's a 15, 16 to 14 terminal ends. Um, you see, and I'm going to be plugging it in to this little nut here that it's already serving as a negative terminal for other stuff and if you can see the rings there you can appreciate that in the video and then again that's all within the same area where the s pot is and my cable is from project is pretty much complete except i just got to install these things back which is a piece of cake pretty easy but basically you'll see this is where i hooked it up that's my ret and you'll see the lights here that will turn on see of course that's the only light i have for now and my wife's Jeep, again, if I turn it off, I'll notice though that it's red and if you uh, turn off or take out the key, it won't be power anymore and the lights will turn off. So just in case you forget them, there they are. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. You'll see that it's turning off. And voila. Okay guys, girls, fellow Jeepers. Um, been a front project it took me longer than I anticipated mostly because of the pausing and arranging and taking the pictures and the videos uh, what I'll be doing I'll be posting a link for the s pot to get it on eBay again that's about 130 140 I think um, reminder try to get the uh, pay a little extra to get the cable instead of 36 48 inches uh, at least the one if not all of them at least the one going up to the column uh, what else? Oh, the pillar. I'll also be posting a link to the pillar that comes with the five switches. You can use it with four if you want. You don't have to use the fifth. I think, honestly, that uh, if you have the capability in the box for five, why not max it out? Thank you for watching. Leave any comments below. And I hope you liked the video.